Thanks everyone for joining us. Uh, hopefully you're here for the multi-client mission critical personnel life cycle management as a shared service presentation. I'm really fortunate to be here um, with one of our longtime customers. A lot of you are probably maybe new to Appian and new into the Appian space and somewhere on your journey. Um, but Sean here is from SOC and they've been live with an Appian app for, for several different years now and we want to talk to you a little bit about that journey that they went on uh, with Groundswell and, and kind of where they are now and, and what they're doing with Appian and what they've been able to do as an organization. Um, but definitely wanted to be uh, you know, really informative for you all and hopefully we'll have some time at the end. I know everything's running a little bit late today for, for some Q&A. Um, but can I get started? Um, I'm gonna let Sean go ahead and, and introduce himself first. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. My name's Sean Quill. I'm the uh, Vice President of Digital Transformation for Dan Zimmerman's Government Service Business Unit. Um, and ran with the, I was a project executive for the, uh, the case management system we're gonna talk about for SOC today. So, really glad to be here. And I'm Blake Templeman, the Chief Product Officer with Groundswell. Um, really proud to be here with you as well, and, and a huge Appian partner. Um, I've been doing Appian for over 10 years, and, and most of you um, know that I've been in the Appian space, but I bet most of you also don't know that one of the very, well, the very first Appian application that I was ever involved in was a end-to-end lifecycle management at the OCC for their entire onboarding process, and that's the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency. So going all the way back to the beginning, my very first project was onboarding, sustainment, and offboarding of individuals. So really was excited when kind of heard what Sean's use case was. And we've done quite a few different employee lifecycle or personnel lifecycle management solutions on the Appian platform. And I got to know Sean and, and really know their use case. And I was like, everybody says their onboarding is broken and hard and really challenging. And I was like, if we can make this one work, this is going to be crazy. They've got multiple different background checks. People go through three rounds of medical screening. People go through weapons training. You could have a canine in the mix. So it gets really crazy when you go through onboarding. And then you get into all the other stuff as well. And so we'll get into all of that, but really shows you, you know, you can tackle really challenging, complex and unique things with the Appian platform. So kind of given all that, kind of you want to talk about how your journey got started and kind of how you found Appian and how you found Groundswell? Yeah. I I think like all journeys, it started with uh, a very large problem set. Um, to, to put context around what we were dealing with, um, the IDIQ that we had was from the Department of State, the contract was World Protective Services, and the service we were providing was putting um, very specialized staff into austere environments around the world to do physical security for the Department of State. Um, and, and as Blake no, uh, noted, uh, to, to do that onboarding process, um, is, it's a very difficult recruiting process. Um, it's a very long onboarding process. And then to make things even more complicated, um, we have to be compliant over the course of, of that contract. So these guys have to stay uh, effective to be downrange with weapons, obviously. Um, so when I got there and assessed the situation, um, what, what really had happened was we got out of EIQ, there's only four companies that, that could bid on, on task orders or the contracts, and we got four in a relatively quick succession. And what happened was, as we stood them up, we kind of siloed ourselves. We started, you know, standing up this program, standing up this program, and each one of the program managers did it kind of a little differently, right? Um, and what ultimately happened was we had 36,000 spreadsheets and everybody was dealing with emails and it got very difficult to report on our compliance, com uh, report on our operational efficacy. Um, so I was like, wait, we, gotta, we need a reset. We need to build a case management system, literally from the ground up. It wasn't, let's go find something off the shelf. It was, it was impossible. The, the complexities that, that this contract uh, presented were, it was gonna be a custom build from, from the jump. Had to do it really quick. We're in our second option year. Um, and, and so it, it immediately turned me to a low-code technology uh, uh, solution because we needed to have an accelerated uh, application development effort. Um, and the other thing, so I went and looked, and, and there was another player out there, Gardner had a couple of players out there, but the one that set Appian apart was they were FedRAMP, and that was a hard requirement to have a, uh, a cloud solution. So went got Appian, looked at a couple of development partners. Um, they graciously brought Groundswell to us, which was, uh, which was really, really, I think, the key to our success because 
of, they were insiders. They came from Appian. They had an aggregate total of, I don't know, 30, 40 years of experience. And I knew we couldn't false start on this project, right? So um, came in. And, uh, and maybe you should talk about like your, your discovery solutioning kind of approach with us when you, when you first got there. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So one of the things that's a little bit different about Groundswell and how we do things is you've got companies that really, they've got a lot of consulting skills and they can come in and they can solve your problems. And then you've got other companies in the space that really got appy and chops, but there's not a lot that, that really are passionate about doing both at the same time. So we put a lot of effort into understanding the customer's business problems, and we make sure that we don't just jump in and, like Sean said, fall start, go with too many ideas from just one person, really wanted to get a whole understanding of where their problems were, what the technologies they were using, and not just you know, what the immediate problem was, but understand a lot better about how they got here and what are the other problems in the space. And so we went through, multiple different discovery sessions, solution sessions. Um, we have a lot of solutions at Groundswell, so we were able to leverage some of our solutions to build them a, a custom demo very, very quickly. Um, and one of the things that was really fun is, is Sean was, I got this one person on my team who just wants to see a pizza tracker. He's a big Domino's fan. He was like, can you just somehow throw the pizza tracker into the demo? And I was like, we really want to get into the business value and the problems, but he's like, but you'll get them to pay attention if you put the pizza tracker on there. Right. So we threw the pizza tracker on there yes. and we did it really quickly. And he was like, that's crazy. You could kind of get that in there so fast. But it was just another showcase of what the Loco platform could do. And from there, we really sat down and, and we knew onboarding well because we had done a lot of different onboarding solutions. But, but I knew that there was more to their business and they had a vision to not just do it for the initial implementation, but to grow it to more of a shared service to support multiple customers. And so we really started to talk about, you know, where are the pain points other than just all the systems that don't talk and all the paper? Like, where are you getting jammed up and, and how could our solution move the needle more than you were expecting? And, and we really put a big emphasis on the, the business process re-engineering and working with a customer. And I don't know, do you want to talk about kind of the, the breakthrough moment when you were like, I kind of get why these guys want to put this much time in up front? Yeah, our, our problems were, uh, we had, like I said, we struggled with um, protecting PII. Um, we were doing a lot of transactions in email. We were doing a lot of transactions uh, using spreadsheets. Um, we had a, a very complicated um, IDIQ. So when, when you look at the things that we had to manage, it was documents, hundreds of documents per person, um, medical, um, uh, physicals, drug tests, um, uh, vaccines, etc. cetera. Uh, we had training. We had qualifications that had to be maintained. And so one of the things that stuck out to me when I brought this to, um, to, to Blake was, how do I get those compliance requirements into the system? And so he came up with something. It's not the sexiest name, but it was called the Task Order Clean Builder. And it's kind of like a rules engine, if you will, in the case management system. And it was hierarchical. It was like, let's put all the requirements at an IDIQ level. As you get contracts, you can cherry pick those different requirements and apply it to that task order. And then let's go down a, le a next level and take those same attributes to a position level. At that point, I was like, all right, this guy totally gets what we're trying to do. I'm going to have to prove compliance at a position level across multiple task orders. Okay? And the process of getting somebody from recruited to a candidate to actually being deployable is about a six-month you know, process, right? Because we have to do bios and we have to do background checks and we have to do um, medical background checks so there's two phases or three phases of that so there was a, just a plethora of things that were going on not to mention our churn rate was relatively high so it was a constant you know hiring people going on deployment people going on leave people quitting and you were trying to stay up to speed with the recruiting and onboarding process that all became very easy for us once we got that particular foundational idea in place because now as we went to recruit, we knew what documents to collect from each position, right? We knew what medical requirements we had to fulfill as we were going through onboarding. Um, and, and they were variable by task order. So by having that one little, I would, I, it's an innovation uh, in a case management system, it just changed the way that we defined our processes and on top of that, um, it created governance um, and, and the way that we ingest documents and data. We started um, 
one, one, another breakthrough, I guess, was we wanted to distribute the uh, workload across all of the stakeholders that were in the, fun uh, the, the funnel, right? So before it was like our team was aggregating all the documents, uploading the documents into a system, you know, typing in all of the, the data points, and we were like, well, wait, why doesn't the applicant do some of this? Why doesn't our medical vendors start doing some of this? If we give them this centralized uh, place to work together, we become way more efficient throughout that work funnel. Um, and so we discussed that, well, we're gonna have a task-oriented, centralized, integrated solution that you know, forces the user to actually meet the requirements of the contract because we've already established that with the TO Clim Builder. Um, so all of this stuff, you know, he was, you know, he, he, I don't know if anybody's been in a discovery session with this guy, but he's constantly throwing ideas at you, almost at a, at a, break, a breakneck uh, pace. But, um, but I, I realized when we started talking through all of this design, um, this was going to be something special. The other element that was, uh, that was really hard for our organization is we were using four different systems. We were using SAP. We were using, our ATS was Bullhorn. Uh, or our applicant tracking system. We were using uh, InfoMart as our background track. We had two medical vendors. We had a training vendor. Um, and all of these uh, you know, different systems were kind of coming in, like I said, through email. So another really hard requirement was integrations. Um, and I thought it was easy. I really did. I was like, this is easy, no problem. Um, <laughs> it wasn't easy. Um, but Groundswell made it seem easy for us. Um, it was, like I said, it was a hard requirement. Um, Appian helps very much with that integration. And so ultimately what we ended up with was a product that had a lot of governance. It created operational continuity for the first time. Um, our, our organization now extended beyond the internal stakeholders. Now we were using you know, third parties to actually help us build these cases and what we got out of it was really strong data, really strong document management. And, and what that yielded at the very end of this was I could plug it into Power BI and I could visualize compliance for the very first time to our client. Um, and we went from, when we launched, I believe we were at about 56, 57% compliance from a data visualization perspective. We had the documents, we had the data, it was just all over the place. Once we were able to see where those gaps were, we updated the system, and within about three to four months, we were at 90, 95% in documents, 100% in medical. We had, you know, by a multiplier, improved our compliance across all of our task orders, which fundamentally changed the relationship we had with the Department of State. So it was, it was, a, it was a, literally a transformational moment for us, and that was, that was probably a nine-month effort. So I'm talking about 700-plus process models um, for five integrations, something like that. Um, so I didn't anticipate the accelerated development effort. I, I really thought we were looking at probably a year, year and a half. You said that, would, I think I'm pointing at Eric Reynolds and, and Justin <laughs> out there. They, they said six months, I was like, no way. Um, but we did, we landed a right about go live about nine months after we started. Um, the other benefit that I didn't really understand at the time when we went through this, this initial process was that we could reuse um, the process models that we had. And we deployed this sol same solution into our special programs organization. And um, you know, we support some three-letter agencies out there, and um, they were doing things differently, just like the other task orders were, for no reason, right? So we were like, let's, let's take what we have with Department of State, and let's you know, do the same thing. It took us four months to get that to go live. So again, now I've accelerated you know, uh, a solution, got it in place. Um, and just recently, uh, we went live with uh, Department of Energy. We have a strategic petroleum reserve uh, relationship. Same thing, physical security. Um, took us five months. There's about 151 um, uh, folks on that particular program. Five different sites. Um, little different, but we were able to repurpose those process models, but use the same framework um, and got up a compliance report. DOE had never seen a compliance report uh, come out in a data visualization solution. So um, all of that was possible because of, of this, this dynamic case management system that, um, that you guys built. So, and, and, and I think one of the things that people probably aren't gathering from kind of that explanation is <laughs> 
as they built out more as a shared service to support more and more of their customers. And yeah, I'll take, we didn't really describe a lot of what SOC does because we're not, I'm not allowed to, and I'm, I'm gonna let Sean tell you as much as he can, but it, they support, and he's named some of the agencies they support, but as they're growing this shared service and this footprint, I think what is really, really important, because everybody claims this, and everybody says their stuff is low code, once we got them live, we handed it over to them, and they've done all of these other onboardings of these other customers on the platform that we stood up for them. And I think that's in itself a story that you hear a lot, but you don't actually see a lot. So all those additional customers they've added to the platform, it's been with your in-house resources. Yeah, I, that's, a, that's a huge benefit. Um, one of the things I was very concerned with, once you make a complex solution like this, is who's gonna support it? It's generally what your IT organization asks, like who owns this thing and who's gonna you know, continue to, to nurture it? Um, and I asked Groundswell that as well. What, what Blake did was he helped me find uh, an architect. Um, we went and hired that person. Um, and he's been maintaining it for about a year and a half now. This past year, coming into this three quarters end, we, we, I think it was around 15 or 1600 service tickets were done by this one person, um, most of which were enhancements or new features. Um, yeah, the speed that, that we were able to uh, turn around optimizations to the business is one of the greatest benefits that we've gotten out of this, because that was one of the greatest uh, complaints that we got in IT was you guys aren't able to meet the demands of the customer and we're feeling that. So solve that problem. We do not hear that anymore. Matter of fact, the, the product that we were using before, which was in-house, very organic, was a retrofit from another business unit. Um, they were doing releases once a year. So you would basically get a list of all these things that they needed from their business unit and they weren't getting fixed until a year later, which probably meant they were out of date, right? So um, that was huge. And then the other piece that's really beneficial is I'm in a, in a really good position to scale because now that I have this kind of uh, SME, you know, architect slash developer, I just hired another uh, straight out of college, um, computer science background, but never have seen Appian. Um, and she is, I guess, five months in and she's, she's moving at a very quick rate of speed. So I can see where I could add a stable of, of Appian developers um, you know, as, as we scale, they'll scale, um, you know, the, the organization. And like I said, I don't need that many. If I can do what I did, I mean, we stood up three different, um, you know, programs with one developer uh, over the course of the last year. I'm not going to need a lot of them. So there's a huge return on investment on that, on that, uh, on that hire. And, and, and like there are with a lot of organizations out there, there's a little bit of, you know, you've got some, sometimes you've got IT on one side, you've got the business on the other and, and kind of making things happen. And there were some different quotes and different numbers thrown out. You were looking at these legacy programs that were supported by, you know, 20 plus people. They were going to rebuild it and maybe something else. And it was going to be supported by, you know, at least 10, maybe 20 plus people as well. So I think it was completely eye-opening that now that they're doing this really with such a small team and, and been so successful. Um, but I think kind of going back to kind of how we kick this off is, one of the things that was really cool is they were going through the process and they had been live for a little while is a lot of times we have customers that, that really hate when someone says, okay, auditors are coming in. Mm. And they're like, oh no, not that time. And it's weird because we've been to some customers and got that and then we've gotten really great reviews back. And I'm like, oh, this is actually really good. So I get excited, then I get a little nervous. Well, what if this one isn't as good? But you guys had an auditor come in and kind of dig in and look at your entire process. Yeah. I was excited. You were kind of like borderline, but, but how did all that go? Yeah, so we, we're required to do an ANSI audit every uh, year. Um, and part of that audit is, hey, just sit down at a table and I'm gonna ask you for certain things um, about your staff, right? I want you to show me a certificate for um, this particular training class for this particular position. I want you to show me um, that this guy has medical, you know, X, whatever, right? And they're just literally saying, so we did it so quickly based on our ability to go retrieve that information. Um, the, the interface, it's, it's at a glance, uh, you know, uh, reporting. So you can go into somebody's case record, click on a tab and see an entire audit trail of what they've done um, from a deployment pers perspective, from their medical perspective. Um, and he said to us, he's like, you should go white label this. You should sell it 
Um, and I was like, I don't want to get in the product game. But um, at the end of the day, it was a really, it was a nice compliment because it was a painless audit, which is not normally what we went through. It was like we would get really prepared, like, all right, everybody's on deck because he's going to ask us for something and we're going to have to run down the hall or go get somebody's local computer and pull something up. It was, it was one of those, like, we went in 30 minutes later, we came out. Um, and they said it was one of the most innovative things he's seen in our, in our in industry, which, um, yeah, I was, I was happy about it. I mean, I'm always happy to walk out of an audit unscathed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was, it was uh, one of those things that I think what we've created ultimately, and, and the way I've positioned it with our, our business owner, is that we're trying to make, and, and it's not normal, I, I come from a commercial background, but when I, when I got into the government space, I was like, why can't we make sticky applications? Why can't we um, create things that makes the government, uh, you know, your counterpart's job easier? Why can't we do that? Because if we do, then when we go rebid this, we might be able to ask for a little bit more money because well, we're going to take our toys with us if, uh, if you guys don't go with us. So I was like, well, that's how it works in the commercial world. People looked at me a little side-eyed on that because they're like, well, that's just not how the government works. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's necessarily true. They really, really have been impressed with our ability to, to be nimble with reporting, right, and be able, hey, I need this, and we'd be able to give it to them. Or we can visualize the, the data so it's super easy to digest. Um, and all of that comes from... Uh, having a case management system that was super thoughtful in the way that we constructed it um, from the back end to the front. Uh, and, you know, having that architecture and that data um, you know, kind of scheme that we came up with made us really, really nimble when it came to reporting. That's what I really love because Department of State used to challenge us a lot and we didn't really answer the bell. Now we do. Um, and I thought that was a huge step forward for our organization. And now with DOE, they had not seen, you know, um, the same thing. So it's, it feels like it's a slow rolling ball, but it's getting momentum um, because now we can actually show uh, through visual, visualized data our efficacy as a service provider. And um, that's different. You know, it's different in the government space. So I'm um, really proud of that, actually. Yeah, and, and like a lot of organizations, whether on the commercial side or the federal side, there's fits and starts when things get get started, right? There's people who are let's get let's just go in. There's detractors. Let's kind of make sure that this is the right selection. But kind of now that it's all said and done, you've been live for a while. Kind of what's been the kind of overall impact to the organization, and and, and how do people really feel about the decision? Well, change management was hard, um, but once we got everybody, I think the the biggest part of this is being able to as if you're a program manager, you have to go and do a program management review. I think being able to step into that review um, with a, uh, a confidence that what we're presenting to our customer is accurate. Like, I think having a single source of truth um, in one system, because we were able to integrate all of these different uh, you know, systems and applications, um, has been one of the greatest benefits uh, to, to the business. And then on top of that, being <clears throat> able to um, continue to optimize the, the, the system um, and stay lockstep with the demands of our customer, which again, I mean, everybody talks about it, but to be able to do it um, has, has been really a, a huge benefit to the organization. And to the extent that we're starting to use this uh, solution with our business development uh, team, they're starting to go out and present it as a, uh, as a real selling feature, as a differentiator from uh, our competition. So um, I don't know if that's enough benefits, but there's, there's, no, a, there's, yeah. a lot of, there's a lot of benefits that we're feeling right now. And I guess lastly is our organization is really optimized procedurally. Um, they don't have to worry about finding emails. We basically, I'm always, you know, as a digital transformation guy, always trying to eliminate emails and spreadsheets. I actually hate them. Um, so uh, if we can get rid of them and have people transacting in a, in, a, in a place where we can audit and see, we're always in a better place. And, and that's a, you know, another... Uh, thing that, that has changed the culture within our organization. I can't let you get away, and, and I want to get it in before we run out of time, <laughs> but one of my favorite parts of the program is uh, a lot of the, the weapons training. Mm -hmm. So there's very unique into this, this kind of onboarding and, and kind of personal life cycle management is, is weapons training, and then you got to continue to stay certified. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I was really bummed was our team actually got to take a trip out to see the product in use and kind of see people do this. And 
I thought it was really, I was missing out, and they told our team they were actually going to get to uh, participate. Um, little did they know that they were just pulling their leg the whole time. But, um, yeah, talk about kind of that and <laughs> that whole experience, of what you thought, and kind of you were surprised they thought they were so, going to actually fire a gun. Yeah, no, I was trying <laughs> to get us there. Um, no, so, so one of the, one of the challenges, um, when, when you go and do weapon qualifications, you're at a, a gun range, you're, you're out in the middle of nowhere, um, but we have to store the, the scorecard and the, the target, right? Um, so they would basically have to, you know, take that back, scan them in, um, upload them into the system. And I was like, well, let's, let's take Groundswell out and, and go through the process as, as if they were going to train on weapons um, and, and, and see the, the, uh, the range master go through his process. Um, unfortunately, it was a bad day. They didn't get to shoot guns. But um, they did get to, to see kind of the process, and they came away with a solution where you, I think we had an iPad solution where you could take a picture of the weapon, take a picture of the, the scorecard, and it automatically uploaded into, uh, into the training um, case record. So um, again, you know, take them out there, they're like, oh, we can solve this problem. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, I didn't meet my, my side of the bargain. I didn't get them you know, a, a, a Glock uh, or a M4 opportunity, but um, they, they definitely, that was a really huge efficiency game for us because what we were doing before was scanning them, putting on a disc. Somebody was driving from Montrose, Virginia up to Chantilly, Virginia. We were downloading all of these documents onto a, a local computer and then somebody was uploading them into the system versus, hey, take a picture of it and automatically loading it into uh, a file on that person's case record. So just maximum uh, efficiency gain there. Um, so I apologize you guys didn't get to partake <laughs> in the training. <clears throat> so we're, we're, we're almost out of time. I, I don't know, is there anything else that, that kind of you think, you know, for people that are either starting the journey, they've been on the journey, um, anything that's just been super impactful, anything else kind of that, that you really feel like is something you want to share with everyone? No, I think Appian in general, like, they, they actually, um, they deliver what they, they say. Um, in other words, if you're looking for an accelerated application development effort, you need it. There's urgency behind it. It's real. Like, we... Um, you know, we delivered a very, very complicated uh, recruiting, onboarding, and lifecycle management system in nine months. I mean, I, I really don't think that could have been done with any other platform. And then I would also recommend if you're going to do this, um, you want to be really, really sure who your partner is in the development space, right? We got, I would say, lucky. Um, I think the secret's out that everybody knows Groundswell is, uh, is valid and can do an excellent job. Um, but that was really uh, the secret uh, of our success. And then lastly, plan for when the application process, development process is over and get into the O&M you know, world. How are you going to solve for that problem? Um, again, these guys helped us out getting a, a developer. Um, you know, somebody used, we're, in our, we're going towards a citizen developer uh, world. It's, it's, it's really happening. Um, we're seeing it firsthand. So um, I think that low-code technology, pick the right one. I think Appian's it. I think Groundswell's your best partner. Um, but, you know, uh, you will get a return on your investment for sure. We've proven it through, uh, through you know, putting you through a very complicated uh, uh, charge. So, Yeah, I know you can't talk about the numbers, but you can, you can say that you basically instantly recouped your investment, can't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because it's kind of an indictment on where we were as an operation. We were, we were, <laughs> we were clearly losing um, money. But yeah, within about the first, I think I, we, it was about a year and a half, maybe 16 months, we, we recovered the entire cost of, of the build. So um, that was huge, especially because um, it was not the easiest sell with the, with the CEO of Dan Zimmerman. You know, he's, he wanted to make sure that what we were doing was going to yield some benefit. I had no idea it was going to go that fast, but I was very happy when it did. So, yeah, good point. I forgot about that. Of course you want to tell that one. <laughs> so. Well, yeah, thank you all for joining us, and, and hopefully you definitely found this really informative. Um, we definitely have a couple more minutes. Um, if anyone has any questions, Sean and I are happy to answer them about the process, about the journey. Um, definitely if you have questions, shoot. I, I, I think someone is in the audience. They have a microphone. If, if you want to ask anything, um, if you don't feel comfortable asking out loud, you can come up um, as we wrap up and ask us questions as well. All right, we've got a couple. Hi. Um, is this on? OK, yeah. here we go. Um, so Sean, you mentioned at the beginning of the presentation that it, it took about six months to onboard 
people yeah, yeah. and that was you know that's what you primarily do right time yeah. is money yeah so can you share what the process was like after you built the Appian solution and how long it took then? Yeah, the, the Appian solution uh, didn't, it didn't increase our, uh, our, our speed because really one of, those, uh, one of those hurdles you have to jump on the onboarding process is getting a clearance. So going through the SF86 process, submitting that to the Department of State and waiting for them to approve it was really the long arm in our onboarding. But the benefit was we could see where every person that was in the pipeline, where they were. Um, and, and it also gave us the ability to measure how long it takes to recruit. So we figured out it's 22 days on average to recruit. It's uh, 15 days to, to submit a bio. It's, I think it was like four months to get a, a, an interim clearance back. Training took two months. So it, it provided us a lot of visibility, which helped our recruiting. And you know, part of our job is keeping people staffed. So anytime somebody quit, a six month to get the, the replacement was a problem. So it helped our forecasting. Um, we didn't really compress that because a lot of the onboarding was outside of our control. And I, I will say that this, when you hear clearance, it's a little bit different. These are people that are being cleared to take guns into other countries. <laughs> so it's not, going through your you know, public trust clearance here, not yeah, even yeah. some of the others. No. And some of these people are, are getting clearances and they're getting training because they actually, not only are they going with a gun, they're going with a canine as well. So there's a lot of reason in, uh, behind the timelines. Okay. Hi, um, I, I'm curious about the piece where you mentioned uh, after you had used Groundswell to develop mm -hmm. the initial um, application mm -hmm. that you were able to bring in you know, one, one architect, developer, mm -hmm. and then one or two others, mm -hmm. sort of with no experience, and they quickly get up to speed. Um, so those folks, did they come in, and I don't know how your organization is split up, but, but did they come in as technical hires? Did they come in as business hires? And how easy was it for them to then do additional development leveraging what Groundswell had done um, in the organization's Appian platform? That's a great question. Um, first of all, I report into the CIO of Day and Zimmerman, so they came in as IT uh, uh, resources. Um, yeah, it was a very complex uh, product. It took, you know, Groundswell helped us with the onboarding of that architect developer, the first one. Um, and then it took them probably about eight months of learning all of the, the system. I have a dedicated product manager that, that partners with him. Um, and then the Second developer that we hired straight out of college um, had never touched Appian. She's about six months in, and she's starting to get out on her own right now, solving some of the more simple tickets. She's not doing enhancements or, or new features. She's really focused on bug fixes right now. Um, I was just talking to Eric and, and Justin from Groundswell and Blake. We think it's about a year to get somebody to be fully competent to go out and, and really be a, a standalone developer and, and, and you kind of add, add value from a, a new feature perspective. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining us. And like we said, if you have other questions, come up and ask us or, or we'll be over by the Groundswell booth. Um, but yeah, thank you for your time today. And hopefully you found this very informative. Thanks, guys.